Suppose we are being asked to calculate solubility from KSP. Solubility is telling us how much dissolves. KSP is the equilibrium constant. So let's take a peek here. We have a KSP for calcium fluoride as 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11th at 25 degrees. So here's what I'm thinking is I'll just reread that first sentence. Calcium fluoride, CaF2, based on charge, is in dynamic equilibrium with its ions, Ca plus 2, and two fluoride ions. Again, when it dissociates, one calcium is produced, but two fluoride ions, the solid in dynamic equilibrium with its aqueous ions. And they're providing for us a KSP as 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11th. Assuming that calcium fluoride dissociates completely, there's no other important equilibria affecting its solubility. And that's placed in the problem to just tell us there's no common ion effect, which would affect solubility. We're being asked to calculate the solubility of calcium fluoride in grams per liter. Grams per liter ends up to be our target. So, if I think about what this expression is telling me, we're asked to find ultimately how many grams per liter of this solid salt is dissolved. Let's take a peek at what the expression is showing us. If the KSP is indeed the concentration of the calcium ions in solution times the fluoride ions in solution squared, and this value is provided for us, why don't we call the value of calcium ion X and the value of fluoride ion 2x. We can set that equal to the known KSP value. So here's what we have. 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11th, the value of KSP provided, is equal to x, what we called calcium. The value of fluoride is 2x, and I need to still square that value. Three point nine times ten to the negative eleventh. Let me just simplify that. Three point nine times ten to the negative eleventh is going to be equal to four x cubed by the time I'm sim done simplifying this algebra on the right hand side. Four x cubed. Alrighty. So why don't we just pull out x with our calculator? Three point nine e negative eleventh. That's 44. <laughs> There's the 11, 3.9 e negative 11, divided by 4, and that's equal now to x cubed. Raise that now to the value of cube root, and we get 2.13, and I'll carry that over. x is equal to 2.136 times 10 to the negative fourth. And what X is standing for is the calcium ion, so there's a, a molarity unit there. However, since the ratio here of the salt also is 1 to 1, what this number is also telling us is 2.136 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity units is the calcium fluoride concentration in molarity units. So if we know 2.136 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity is equal to x moles per liter, and that's really what we're trying to solve for is per liter, this value is also the number of moles. And moles times molar mass will pull out the number of grams per liter. Let me add a molar mass for calcium fluoride. We have 40 from the calcium, 19 times 2 on the fluorines, Molar mass is 78 grams per mole. Alrighty. So let's hit for the answer. We have 2.136 E negative 4 times 1 gives us moles. Moles times molar mass, so times 78. And we find our answer 0 0.017 grams per liter of calcium fluoride. Revisiting the journey, we set up our equilibrium constant expression as being the calcium ion 
times the fluoride ion squared. I like to select the value for X, the, the uh, ion that has just one. So X became calcium, 2X became fluorine, and we squared. Our KSP then was equal to 4X cubed. Doing the algebra, we pulled out X. X represented originally the calcium ion concentration, but due to the stoichiometry, it also represents the calcium fluoride concentration. From there, we did some molarity work. Molarity times volume pulled out moles. Moles times molar mass pulled out the solubility in grams per liter.